Okay, this is another uh, distribution uh, Shiny application, uh, but this time it's with the normal distribution, which is the most famous, the granddaddy of them all, the most uh, famous widely used distribution in statistics um, for a lot of reasons, one which we will see later sort of in this book when we discuss the central limit theorem. Um, everyone's seen the normal before, you know, if you if you talk to your parents, or not, not your parents, but someone who doesn't know anything about statistics, they know about the bell curve, right? They're like, oh yeah, my class scores are always distributed to the bell curve, hertz are, heights are distributed according to the bell curve, so they, you know, they've seen the normal, but our job here is to really understand the normal distribution a, a bit more. As usual, we have sort of the plot of the random variable here, and we have the parameters of the, ran of the plot and the random variable on the left side. Number of draws, again, we're going to set to 1,000 just to start, just to get a nice full plot. And then we have uh, mu and sigma. So uh, key to note that um, we're changing sigma here, where by convention we just call the standard deviation sigma, but the value, the, right, we have x is normal, 0, mean 0, the variance is sigma squared. So if I change this to like, you know, 1.8, it, it would be, I can't highlight this, but it, it's, is it 3.24 is 1.8 squared. Okay, so um, just be, be aware of that scaling. Um, and we can sort of just remember that mu is the mean, so it's sort of the center of the distribution. The normal is always symmetric, right? It's always this nice bell curve. And sigma, or, you know, sigma squared just represents how spread out it is. So if I, you know, pay attention to these, these, um, the x-axis, if I bump mu up, all of a sudden I'm centered around 5 now, and it goes from 2 to 8. And recall, like, the 65, 68, 95, 99.7 rule, like, 68% of the data is between one standard deviation, of the mean, here the mean is 5, the standard deviation is 1, so 68% of the data is between 4 and 6, um, and you know, I can plot a bunch of times and see how it kind of oscillates, because that normal shape, if I pop mu down to 5, negative 5, it's now centered around negative 5, you know, move it back to the 0, it's centered around 0. If I increase sigma, all of a sudden you see like huge tails, right, instead of going from like, you know, before we had uh, from negative 3 to 3, here we have negative 30 to 30, so increase the variance and it spreads out. If I have zero variance, uh, this is pretty interesting, if I have zero variance, then I have a single point, right? Like, I, if the variance is zero, this is a degenerate random variable, it's it's a constant, right? So it's always going to be zero, the mean is zero, there's no variance, so it's always zero, and R here is showing the plot. The histograms in R can be a little bit off. Here it's trying to show that all the values are at zero, so it puts the bar to the left of zero. But here, essentially, we're just plotting, you know, a bunch, we can hit go at that a bunch of times, and every time we're just getting all these, that these draws are, are zero, because, you know, and if I move mu up to three, right here, all the values are, are, are three, because this is a constant. It, x, when x is normal, three, zero, it's just saying that x equals three, it's a constant. Um, and, you know, let's move sigma back up to an interpretable value. So again, that's sort of the, the idea. If we increase, decrease the number of draws, as usual, we see not always the smooth bell curve because of the sampling variability for small sample sizes.